Hey guys, it's me Chan Dragon, and today's video is about PGR and we will focus on anything here with one mod which is Norman. So I will not make like very very complex, just a small tips and guide for those people that aim to beat this and I just explain directly to the hardest difficulty so it will work for every single type of difficulty. So yeah, I really want to make this video but it's always discouraged me because I know in two patch it will change again this Norman format so kind of feel like what's the point but as I think again, hey, this is still another 6 month and more so let's just make it so let's get started why i really encourage you to do normal revival plan mostly first because the reward so this one they give you tantalum or this tantalum or very useful to upgrade your cup let's say from s to s is very important that's why i really encourage to do not only that you will get a bunch of resources in here let's say for hyper tune material this is very helpful it gives you a lot in here just by clearing this another important stuff in here it will give you six star weapon resonance chart if you can collect this until 150, you can get a free USB weapon, weapon resonance shard that you don't need to pull any extra copy of your weapon, which is that's a huge, truly deal. Other than that, they give you a free pull for your cup itself. So let's start first with the first tip, which is don't forget every single day after you do daily, don't forget to collect the ore in here. There will ore symbol in here that you need to click every single day in here because if not, you will not get the reward if I'm not wrong. That's just very important because me sometimes I forgot so that's tips number one. Do that daily, call it your or daily to get this more. And the next one we will move to power generating. In here, usually I don't really want to force you, just do whatever that you can. Of course, the minimum you have to touch like 15,000. So if you can do that, that's also fine. But usually I stayed in 1800. I never even touched this. So I think if you already touch here, it's already good enough. You don't have to worry. So this is basically the energy. Energy in here I will explain later. Basically this one will give you buff. The more you have this, you will can get more buff but I will explain later. And let's move to the next part which is the stages that you need to clear which is the elimination stages. So in here I just want to give you a reminder if you're a new player or that still climb up, don't have much team. I really recommend you to stop until Bolly Mine because in here the one that gives you the best value of the best stopping point that I can say. Because this one the Cloud Island it's the hardest part and doesn't give you really much like reward so you literally only get getting this one still nice but i don't think like it's worth especially if you don't have much team you will quiet mold so i will recommend you to go until these five first five stage and a little bit notes in here if you want to get all the reward you need to clear the first five stage meaning until bowling mine or in three days because if not, you cannot get all the rewards. For the Cloud Island, don't worry, you can even clear it until the last day before the reset. Because this one the hardest difficulty, so you can just take your own time. But for the other reward, you need to clear in 3 days. Which is mean like the first day, you need to clear until Groening Mine. And second day, you clear the Stride to Mine in here. And the last day, you clear the Bolly Mine. Then you can get all the reward. But don't worry if you cannot literally clear that in 3 days, you can delay it by pressing prolong combat. I cannot do that anymore because it's almost end in 15 days. But of course if you did just start let's say the third day you're really busy, then you say ah, I cannot do that. Just press this prolonged combat you can do the next day because it will delay. But don't kinda expect that yeah you will get all your or everything will be delayed. Your battery also will get delayed, everything will get delayed in here. Okay, let's move to the next part again and in here the moment you want to clear this just go in here directly if you can and you feel like it's a little bit hard to defeat you check what the buff that enemy have so this one indicate what the buff of enemy had so in here let's say they get this blessing will get extra damage bonus enemies around and then damage increase so they will hit you harder so if you feel like it's too hard it hit you hard you can actually remove it you clear this this stage and then yeah later their buff will be removed so let's say you do this this buff will be removed in here but because i already do both of them it will remove both of them so yeah something like that but i just go directly to the last one the bolly mine in here which is mostly that i say if you cannot defeat these stages in here yet just clear everything the buff in here so you do this first one two three you do this first if you cannot do directly in so i will give you a reminder that there's one buff that i say usually is very annoying but luckily they don't have in here which is if you see there's a buff that indicate that the enemy will heal that's the one that you need to clear no matter what if not it will make you even much harder so i will recommend if they have the healing from the enemy itself you have to clear that no matter what to make it a lot easier trust me 
one thing that I forgot to mention is that after you clear this elimination until this growing one, the first thing you can already auto clear if you already meet the specification. So later the moment you're growing stronger and stronger, these first three stages you can clear automatically. Basically, you don't need to do anymore. So that becomes a lot easier. You only need to focus on second day and third day. So the first day basically is just giveaway for you. And now we'll move to the preparing your team and just how to clear this as easy as you can. So basically in here, if you pay attention, every single stage have buffs. See, increased physical damage, lightning, for the this is uni frame, this one ice and dark. So if I can suggest, try to just follow whatever the buff. So let's say if this is buff your physical, put your physical team. If it's buff lightning, put lightning and so on, something like that in here. So that's why follow, that's very important. And the next part is choosing your buff is also quite important in here which one that kind of important for you actually if you ask what is the best what is the worst it's very depends on your strategy or your tactics or even your gameplay itself but if you want to ask my opinion i can help you that i find like which one is good or bad so let's up first we'll discuss first from the gravity so gravity in here basically it will help you with your movement whatever you move usually it will buff your character in here for me, this buff is actually still pretty good, especially when you have team that keep moving. So let's say your ice team, Isla, where it keep moving, it's also pretty good. That's why I put like ice team with this gravity and I put this one to give you more like extra damage when I move. But you can also utilize in here, you will get like damage extra something like in here or even you want to use this also can diversion. In the end, it's very depends on your strategy, but this one I feel it's good for the fast pacing moving enemy, let's say like ice. Also, physical still pretty good. And the next one is Matrix. This is mostly the buff regarding the Matrix. This is useful mostly for the enemy that keep moving because it has the crowd control feature which is will freeze the enemy also. And it is basically if you trigger Matrix, it will buff your character. This buff is very versatile. It can work for any character. I really recommend you to go for any like your team that you feel weak. This one can give you pretty much a good buff. Like this one, if you get like Matrix, you get 35 damage balls which is pretty very good third camouflage camouflage buff regarding mostly is about dodge so this one the base one will give you a dodge gauge by 200 after you do tripping and whatever like regarding dodge in here it will give you more damage so i usually put on uniframe because uniframe we will do a lot with dodge and execute the uniframe unique skill the speed attack and the finishing move that's why i usually put in here for uniframe the fourth buff which is energy field uh, the name is turbulence in here this buff is basically very random it's just like double edge sword you can get a very best run in your entire like team in this norman or the worst one because you can see in here they will give you substantial damage 30 percent but if you bet like you can get character damage bonus minus 15 percent this is basically like gambling run so i cannot even recommend which one that you should go but for me usually because this is too rng i give to my stronger side team let's say physical or lightning because i don't want to deal with rng but maybe if you really struggle then you feel like the only way is just to gambling in here then yes you can try this buff itself but i personally i don't want i don't want even to spend three hours just to get a good run you can even see the ex additional buff in here the fluctuate between 80 percent to 130 percent that's very gambling that's why i don't really like it i put in my stronger side team the fourth buff which is rip the name is pretty funny this is actually one of the best buff that i really like personally because it's very easy to trigger and give you a good amount of damage and buff because of the use you stripping you'll get additional 15 damage which is that's good and also very easy to trigger you just need to do combo let's say in here you do 50 combo you get 500 damage area damage and until like 200 you will get like extra damage like 40 percent which is good or other than that in here you can try you want to do like when you're lower than 90 combo you get extra 15 percent which is good it's very easy to trigger that's why i usually give to my weaker side team in here in my case my weaker side either ice or dark that's why i usually give either both of them so i really recommend for you to give to your weaker side of team the last one which is preparation so this is basically also pretty good this is regarding like switch cooldown something like that and give you buff whenever you switch character so this is also pretty easy to trigger especially the character that non-solo so excluding lightning of course because lightning we already have alpha mostly solo so it will not good with alpha itself but other team still pretty much good because you see after you switching you will get like extra damage bonus 25 percent for six seconds this is actually good so any team it can works, but right now I put on my fire just because I feel fire is very 
fast pace moving just you turn first like Nanami change to Leaf change to Lee and then you do that often like and very fast pace that's why you usually put in fire team but any team also this is can work because this is one of the best buff too there's two more buff that you didn't show because that's usually another cycle which is Constrict Constrict is mostly buff regarding your the stun enemy so if you stun enemy let's say you will get more damage something like that this buff is usually good for like mobs or small enemies but if you, if you already come into like the last Norman stage this is not really good because you're only fighting boss so that's why mostly I give this to like my stronger side of team and the last one which is recovery this is basically gives you survivability and give you buff also which is still pretty good I think this is a well balanced buff that you can give also to any type of your team itself because you will get a recovery after you use tripping recovery 1% which is pretty good also when you're receiving little damage one of the buff in here they will get a little damage which is good if you maybe cannot like dodge that much or die faster you can utilize this as a defensive utility or you will get a like damage bonus according to your hp so this is regarding like hp base buff and this is still good for any type of team in my opinion the one that have a good buff is gravity matrix rip and preparation and the next one which is the battery the one that you will give buff and yeah in here you see i have 5000 right and this is already the last day this is the max that you can get but take those we can never utilize this if you want to get all the reward because first you only have limits too in here if you want to clear this bully mines, basically 150 plus 120 which is that means 270 is the max and also we need to clear this norman in three days to get all reward meaning we will never reach this part if you reach this part that means you cannot get all reward which is that's what the one that we want to avoid so 20, 270 is basically 27 because 10 point for one point in here which is of course 270 yes you can still go more but they already become yellow right that means you will never get all the reward because there is mentioned in here you can still go this higher than recommended value but you will lose some reward and we want to avoid so don't forget if you don't know what is your maximum just see if it's already yellow that means it's already over so this one the most that you can do so that's the things that we want to use so how we can maximize this buff so the first tip that for me in order for you to maximize this battery buff is that to clear first with your strongest team without any buff try to clear without any buff we start with your strongest team let's say in my example like my strongest team right now is physical and I will clear without any buff and I can do that and then lightning team also because Alpha of course can carry without any buff can do that usually uniframe you don't even need even you only have the free to play camo and you can even clear because the most things that you need to do is trigger the uniframe special skill the finishing move something like that you don't need anymore usually you will even not run out of time just keep tri triggering that so you usually don't need like any buff and the next one usually my weakest is either ice or dark so I will try to give usually my ice let's say 5 it cannot clear then I give 10 so something like that and the rest I just give to my dark and that's like it so you can utilize maximize your buff in here and you will kinda not suffer because if you start like randomly sometimes maybe you already offer cap your buff and the next part let's say you already use this battery but you cannot even clear it and there's one more solution which is use you the support character in here support character is your member guild character that they put on here if you not put in here add support member in here so basically if they put that you can use the character for me i help them with leaf empiria so any my guild member can use my leaf empiria sss so make it easier so let's say what you like maybe you like in dark team right and yeah i think i need selena that i just use this selena and i just add to my team but take note it only works for one per stage so let's say if you already use in dark team and that's it you cannot use for other else and this support character can only works until the bolly mine because this part you cannot even ask another friends anymore and that's why i will discuss later this one because this is a little bit challenging and yeah that's pretty much that's it then the only thing that you need to do is just start the battle and all do the best but if you feel like you still cannot clear then just go with the spirit move then just go with whatever buff that you can it's fine if you cannot get all the reward at first time 
Because time to time you can do that, so make that as your motivation. Regarding to beat the boss is pretty hard to explain because it's just matter of like you getting used to it and learn by yourself. But if I want to give advice, there's couple of enemy that I will say it's quite annoying that you have to a little bit getting used to it. There's four of them, but you know always pop up four of them in the same time. It depends like which variants of the Norman. So the first two they are usually in physical element, which is Rosetta and Shakespeare. Both of these enemies basically not really that hard, but the most annoying part from them is that sometimes they move too much until it's already like out of the area that you cannot even reach. So my reminder is that beware with your spacing in here and know where are you right now. If it's too already to the corner, try to move to the center again. Because if not, they will out of the box, you cannot hit, you will maybe waste time in like that and you will end up dying. And the other one is Gabriel. Gabriel is only matter that he move a lot, so maybe sometimes you're playing kinda chasing game, but once you used to it, it's pretty manageable. And the last one which is I feel will be the quite the most annoying one, which is the Hive Mother. Because this Hive Mother usually will move a lot, it will have period where it out of the range, you cannot even hit, it has the OT that will drain your HP. And also you need to parry, if not it will take much longer for you to kill so you need to serve by parrying. So it require you kinda understand this boss gimmick, need train, and also you need to maximize your attack window because the attack window of this monster is basically kinda limited so you know like where to launch your highest damage in the right timing, something like that. So usually this boss in Ice Team and the one that gives you the easiest one to parry as far as I test which is Ayla and Chrome just do the first basic attack, usually it can parry. So in simplified version, let's say you think like what the hell is guys yapping about, then I'll just make the very simple. Your main objective is to clear this elimination stage and then you need to clear this in 3 days until this Bolly Mine, meaning that the first day until this Groaning Mine, second day until Strato Mine and third day is Bolly Mine. This one you can do it later. Let's say you feel you're busy, you cannot do on the third day, you can keep delaying using this prolonged battle so you will not lose any reward so you can utilize to get all the reward. And after that, just do in here and if you feel like you cannot go directly in here, too hard to beat and you can remove the buff. Let's say you find this is buff is very annoying for the enemy itself and you can remove by doing this stage first. So after you doing this step, this buff will gone. So you already see the sign like this, I mean this buff is already gone. And just start the battle in here and then don't forget to utilize this buff let's say physical damage put the physical team lightning and so on something like that and just choose whatever buff that you feel suitable for you and also don't forget to maximize this battery don't forget to don't go over limit you see again how many that you can go if you already become yellow don't go so just try until this green indicator that means you can get all the rewards so just keep that in mind and the best advice is that starting from your strongest character with no buff at all and go until to your weaker side of team and starting to use a little bit of your buff and the last weakest team just give everything that's pretty much it if you feel still struggle you can use the support character from your friend from your guild to help you even more but remember only once per stage if you already feel desperate you cannot clear anymore then that's fine just go over the buff of course you cannot get all the reward but make it as a motivation that in the future you can do that so yeah that's pretty much all the basic for you to get most of the reward that's already covered 90 percent of the reward and now we will move to the last part that mostly only for achievement which is cloud island this is the highest difficulty we call norman x6 so the first thing that advice in here to get first stable team in every single element including uniform in uniform you only need camo basically but if you already have a well-built camo yeah you're ready to go so that's why i say in here even you already invest a single like triple S let's say in Alpha but if your other team is bad you cannot even clear this mode. The most important in this mode is your stability not need like even triple S. So at least for me in order for you to beat this Norman Axis there's a minimum requirement at least as an average player. The easiest route that you can do is like going with all the gen 2 character prioritize, get their main DPS and then go to SS and usually you only need one you can clear everything let's say in physical you have already Bianca Stigmata SS you don't need even signature weapon the other two is just like whatever you want to put Rosetta can even in here leaf eclipse you can still clear let's say in here also like lighting is Alpha Crimson with SS the other two you can even ignore and then this uniframe pretty much you can just put Kamu just make sure you already have the uniframe execution move something like that and here Isla SS at the minimum and all like SS Gen 2 in here like Lee SS you already can clear and that's pretty much the easiest route 
However, let's say how about if you only have Gen 1, that will be a kind of tough. So in here, if you let's say want to use Lightning with only like Vera Garnet SS, it's not enough at least for me. You need another like SS Gen 1 character which is in here. Bianca, Veritas, and yes, you can clear. You don't need signature weapon, but you need like double Gen 1 SS character. So Vera Garnet and Bianca Veritas SS, both of them already can clear if you ask about Gen 1. But if you ask how about like a rank character, as far as I test, is very hard. You need to at least pair with one S rank character to order to make that. I try in here with Bloom SS and Bambinata Triple S and Washi Triple S. Yeah, it can work, but that's super hard. The timing very tight, so I don't really recommend. That's why the very easiest one for you to go, just go with any main DPS Gen 1 and try to go to the SS at least one. But of course for me, my personal recommendation in order to make it a lot more smoother and feels more stable, I really usually recommend for you to have two SS character in your team to make it better. So let's say in here, Bianca Stigmata SS and Rosetta SS and yeah, pretty much you're already good. The other two, you can just make it the weakest one, doesn't matter. Or in here, let's say in Ice, you already have like Isla. SS and you have also Plume SS and yeah pretty much good the last one you can just pretty much ignore you don't even need to get Chrome yes you already still can clear it so something like that so after you already get stable team basically all the tips that I already shared before is pretty much the same remove all the buff that you feel it's annoying for you for this run I feel the most annoying this one so that's why I remove this one and I do also this one I find like annoying I remove these two and yeah after that I just start but if you feel like it's still not enough, remove or all of them and just start the battle in here. And pretty much all the essence that I already told is just the same. Use the buff that you think is will be useful for you in here according to your plan or your tactics and usually utilize your battery starting also from your strongest character without any battery and then start to the weaker one. That's why I would say my weakest team is usually Ice and Dark. That's why I give them more buff in here and then yeah, just do all the best. And the last tip that I want to get fast, if you want to clear easier for your first time to clear this normal axis, try to choose the one that reset doesn't really have any time. So let's say in here, this run is actually a very good run for the one that tried to want to clear this normal axis for the first time because they don't have any time. You see, there's no timing in here. This is the one I really recommend if you want to try to clear for the first time because the other one, that's much harder because it's only 3 minutes. For me, for the first time that I can clear this normal axis, I start with no timing because with the one that have time, I cannot even clear. It's just like maybe until like couple months later when my team more polished, then I can clear that with time. But uh, for the first time that I clear, I choose the one that then don't have any time. And the last also additional stuff that I want to say, if you ask which boss is the hardest, there's two for me the hardest, which is first lightning. But right now because I already have Alpha, you can remove that's hardest because before it's quite hard. Because Lamia. Lamia is moving very fast and you need to parry. But right now, because already Alpha, you can ignore that. So right now, the only one enemy that I find is very hard is in the dark team. Because you see, this is Riot. One of the most annoying enemy, they will keep moving around. So it will take me quite a long time. Especially if this have timer even, it will be nightmare. So you have to pay attention here. So that's why my weakest team usually in dark because it, they just keep moving, my damage is not enough, so yeah. So this one actually boss that you need to pay attention. So that's pretty much it about to clearing Norman Axis. The most important is stability of your team following meta that also can help you pretty much make it easier. And at least to have like Gen 2 character DPS, at least SS that can help you by a lot. If everyone can even SS or at least 2 that even can easier and other else like just clear this buff to make it a lot easier. And the last thing I want to cover which is the cover tactic. This is the easiest one among all. So in here just go on almost like until the last of the Norman cycle and just do all of them at once. Because in here they don't have any limit. They didn't lock you by day by day and then just put all the max buff in here. They don't even find if you go above limit, they don't care because it's only for the elimination. But this part, you just go for the full max buff and you just clear it until the end. And there's one more thing that I forgot to mention, which is perfect tactics. This is actually quite nice if you can get it, but it's kind of pointless too. Because if you can make this like average power of your character whole team, like 7,500, you will get this buff. 
Like every character on field will get permanent extra damage bonus and get super armor. But the problem is to get this is pretty hard. You can see my character cannot even get this buff. So kind of this is like placebo effect. But yeah, if you can get this, this is pretty nice. So that's pretty much just it about Norman. I hope you understand because the explanation oh, I pretty much appreciate and I hope that can be useful for you. And yeah, if you find this video helpful, feel free to shoot for Papa and like and I will see you next time. Bye bye.